During 1989 at Rowe Creek, just outside Alice Springs, a boar known as P-24 was successfully rehabilitated. This video documents the ingenuity and teamwork which brought about the success. During testing of the boar, the pump and column became unscrewed at the surface and was lost down the boar. This also caused the power board to shatter. Tri-State oil tools were engaged to recover the lost equipment. The pump and column were recovered, however the pump motor had broken off. During this operation, the flange on the pump had caught under the 406 mm casing. It was thought that this had caused damage to the bottom of the casing. A swaging tool was manufactured to resize the damaged casing. While swaging was being carried out, the tool unscrewed from the drill pipe and dropped onto the pump motor. A Novashot tool was made with a four and a half inch IF pin. It was hoped this would screw into the top of the swaging tool. Attempts to locate the swaging tool were unsuccessful as it wasn't lying central in the hole. Heavy drill collars and jars were also used in an attempt to drive the overshot over the swaging tool. After considerable effort, Tri-State abandoned its attempt to rehabilitate the bore. The swaging tool remained in the bore. Below that was a pump motor which was sitting on the packer and three metres of steel casing. Below this was 36 metres of stainless steel screens and 14 metres of steel casing. A new approach was needed. It was important to know exactly how the equipment was positioned in the hole. An underwater video camera unit from the Centre for Groundwater Management and Hydrogeology was dispatched from Sydney. A Power and Water Authority drill rig was also sent to the site from Darwin. The camera was assembled and run into the bore. From the surface, the camera's focus, iris and lamp intensity could be controlled. At the water table, drilling operations had left a film of oil. Below, the water was murky. The camera revealed that the top of the swaging tool at 178.4 metres was leaning against the side of the hole. The shoulder of the tool showed some damage. Below this, the pump motor was wedged with the motor drive shaft protruding. An overshot made by Tri-State was modified and run into the hole. It hooked onto the swaging tool but was unable to move it. A hook was made to try to centralise the swage, but this was also unsuccessful. A tool was then made which positioned the string off-center and against the side of the hole. With this ratchet arrangement, anti-clockwise rotation moved the string over the swage, while with clockwise rotation only the drill pipe was moved, allowing the tap on the end of the string to screw into the swage. This was successful and the swage was removed from the hole. The camera was run again, showing the motor laying hard against the wall with part of the flange on top of the pump broken off. An overshot with spring leaves to catch under the flange was run unsuccessfully. A new tool was made which was designed to grip the outside of the motor. The device gripped the motor but wasn't able to bring it to the surface 
indicating how firmly the motor was wedged. A short catch over shop was then tried. Parts were obtained from interstate and overseas. These were mounted in a piece of 305 millimeter casing. This casing had a wall hook to position it over the motor and centralizers to guide the motor into the overshot. This was successful and the motor was brought to the surface. The camera was then run again, showing the pump cable sitting on top of the packer. This was pushed out of the way and a Bowen casing spear was used to try to grip inside the packer and casing string. This was unsuccessful. The casing spear was run using a tapered guide and an offset tool. This wouldn't catch onto the casing. A different guide was used, but it also was unsuccessful. A hook was then used to centralize the casing. The casing spear was run and it managed to get inside the casing. On withdrawal, the smaller casing caught the lip of the 406 millimeter casing. A more powerful drilling rig was brought on site and the 3 meter section of the 273 millimeter casing was removed from the bore. Remaining in the bore was 36 meters of badly damaged screens and 14 meters of steel casing below it. An attempt was made to drill over the outside of the screens using a tungsten impregnated milling shoe on a 12 meter section of 355 millimeter casing. This arrangement began talking up and was abandoned. Similarly, an attempt to drive over the screens with a hardened steel drive shoe didn't work. A spear was made up from a drill collar with steel bars welded onto it. By driving the spear into the screens, Sections were recovered until all that remained was 14 metres of 273 millimetre steel casing. A tapered reamer was made and run to resize the casing prior to running the Bowen casing spear. The spear was then run and engaged the casing. But the piece of casing was wedged firmly in the hole. A 30 ton crane and drilling rig were needed to retrieve the last piece of casing. By the 6th of July, P-24 was all fished out. The bore was then reconstructed.